Hey guys, this is Stephen Kyle, and I'm the pastor of Highland Park Baptist Church. And I know here in Bay County and the surrounding areas, we continue to live in chaos and turmoil. You can see our sanctuary behind me, but I'm so glad that you've chosen to tune in to our weekly broadcast this morning. We're going to open up the Bible, and we're going to study it, and we're going to realize that God's Word applies to us right where we are. So even though we recover from a hurricane, we still serve a God that is on his throne. Thank you for tuning in today. I pray you'll be blessed. And today we're going to talk about life. Uh, And I'm going to need to say some things today. And, and, And I want you to hear me. Today is not a political position. What we're going to talk about today is a biblical position. So whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent or you're like, I don't get into any of that, understand this is not a stance saying who to vote for. This is a stance according to what God's Word says. And so I know in the three services that we have today and the countless number of individuals that will be watching uh, this particular message, there will be a lot of women who have had abortions. And so I would just like to say this to my sisters. As you're hearing me talk about this today, if you hear this voice of self-condemnation, that is not of the Lord, okay? That's not what he is saying. Please hear me. There is no sin, not one single sin, that has power beyond the cross of Jesus Christ. Please get that, okay? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, I could preach a long time just on that right there. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. And then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. A couple of things that we see as we read that passage of scripture today in light of us talking about life. The first important truth I think we've got to understand is we, we being humankind, mankind, we are made in the very image of God. That's what he says right from the get-go in verse 26, that if you read up to the Verse 25, you're going to see that in verse 26 is the very first time that we're introduced to the triune nature of God, what we call the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And notice what he says there in verse 26. He says, let us, let the Trinity make humankind in our image. And so, guys, human beings, the only ones made in the image of God. And therefore, because of that, we alone are more valuable and we are more different than anything else in the creative order that we just read about in this passage of Scripture. We are created in the image of God. There's a couple of different things that we see within our own lives that bear evidence to the fact that we are created in the image of God. The first one is our relationship with God. 
See, guys, we have a unique relationship with God that is not shared with anything else that has ever been created. Nothing else that's a part of the animal kingdom. So understand, when we say that we've been created in the image of God, one of the unique things about us is the relationship that we have with God. Here's the second thing. The relationship that we have with the rest of creation. Matter of fact, he says right here in this passage, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the birds. Have dominion over the cattle, over the animals. That here we are as human beings, and we've kind of been given this creative mandate by God that I want you to be in charge. I want you to have dominion over every other creative thing. Now, guys, listen, notice, God did not say that because that means that we're better than all the rest of creation. We're not the fastest creative thing, are we? We're not the strongest creative thing, are we? And I'll tell you a third way or a third reason or a fact that points to this image being created in, in, in God is the relationship that we have with God's standards. That there is this relational reality between humankind where laws and punishments and protections are put in place by God that are not necessarily put in place when it comes to all the other things that were created. If I were to walk up and, and hit you, what's going to happen? The police are going to get involved. 911 is going to get involved. I'm probably going to end up in jail unless I can come up with a good reason why I had to punch you. There are some things that have been set in order when it comes to creation and when it comes to mankind that are different for human beings. We're not the same. And by that I mean we have order and there is a soul and there is this moral component to us and there is this spiritual component in us that is not in the rest of all the creative order that he talks about here in the book of Genesis. It means that he has called us through that mandate to be in dominion over the rest of it so that we are good stewards to what he has called us to be in dominion over. But we're the only ones created in the image of God. But here's where it gets really important. Our image begins in the womb. Flip over to Psalm 139. I could have gone to many different passages of Scripture, but Psalm 139 is a great passage of Scripture that lets us understand just when this creative process of God began. It says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. God, as he was making me in the womb, knew that he wanted me to have a voice that would be a little loud, and he wanted me to have a little bit of animation where I couldn't talk without using my hands, right? God knew that right before the age of 10, he was going to save me. And God knew that he was going to call me all the days of my life to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm just saying the unique plans that God had for your life while you were still in the womb, he was tweaking you and he was crafting you and he was making you. The spiritual component, yes. The moral component, yes. But even the physical components to be the very person that he wanted you to be to carry out his plans in your life. But it happens in the womb, and he's even going to take it a little bit further. Listen, he's going to say it happens at conception. Flip over to Psalm 51. Find verse 5, Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He is saying, guys, that at conception... Conception, this moral and spiritual component of my human, as he's saying right there, was already present. And that moral thing, that spiritual thing, my humanness, 
It was bent away from God. It was not bent toward God. Anybody in here have a child that would just bite other children? Come on, we're in this together. Let's just be honest. It'll make you feel better to admit it. Yeah, yeah. Are there any of you guys, I mean, they would just have total meltdowns over things that just don't really matter? Yeah. That's what David is talking about there. This, this inherent sinful nature that, that starts inside of us at conception while we're in the mother's womb. And so with that being said, guys, we as Christians, we as the bearers of the light of Christ, we as folks who gather together as the church of Christ are to think about the day and time in which we live in today where over a million little boys and little girls are murdered every single year in the United States of America alone. They're being sucked limb from limb out of their mother's womb in what can rightly be called murder. And I know that we're not the first group of people to kill our kids. We read about it in the Old Testament that the people of, of God, they came along and they sacrificed their children to Molech. And what is happening is an evil thing, a demonic thing that's been going on as far back as the Bible goes. We see it with the Spartans in the Greco-Roman period. They would sit there, guys, and they would look over their sons. And if their infant sons had any defect whatsoever, any blemish whatsoever, they would throw them off of a mountain. That there is this demonic power, this demonic thinking that's been invading human species for a long time. And so what we're doing today, you might argue and say, is just a little bit more civilized version of what has been taking place ever since there has been humanity. And here's what I know. At just eight weeks, at just eight weeks from conception, a baby already starts sucking its thumb in the mother's womb. At eight weeks of conception... If you prick their heel to draw blood, they'll pull their leg back because they're in pain. And can we just talk about how warped the world is that we live in? Just a few months ago in Switzerland, somebody was sitting there one day and they're like, oh my goodness, we're boiling lobsters alive. That has to hurt them. And so they passed legislation in Switzerland making it illegal to boil lobsters alive. And yet in Switzerland, it is perfectly legal to have late-term abortions. Here's what that means. It means that while a baby is viable in life outside of the mother's womb in Switzerland, it's still okay to have an abortion, yet it's illegal to boil a lobster alive. When sea turtle eggs and eagle eggs are sacred and babies in the womb are not, humanity has gone dark. And the argument becomes, well, it's not really a baby. It's a woman's body. And nobody should tell a woman what to do with her body. Okay, I, I mean, I've heard the argument. I, I, I understand the argument in, in, in a history of where, you know, uh, men have abused women and, and their bodies. And, you know, you know, the argument tends to be, well, I can do whatever I want to do because it's my body. No man or anybody else is going to tell me what to do because we've, we've lived historically in this misogynistic society. So I can kind of understand how that argument would come out when it comes to a lot of women. But can I just be honest and say today, I want to argue, scientifically speaking, it's not your body. It's in you. But it's not your body. Think about this. At the moment of conception, according to the Bible, a soul is in place. At the moment of conception, 
that a brand new, completely unique strand of DNA starts at conception. It is birthed out of nowhere, instantaneously at conception. That, ladies, it is not your DNA. It is your baby's DNA. And we know now that at eight weeks, all the organs of the baby are working at eight weeks after conception. That the baby's heart is circulating its own blood. It's not your heart doing it. It's the baby's heart doing it. That the baby's kidneys are, 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 are filtering and functioning its own fluids. It's not your kidneys doing it. It's the baby's. Even the idea... That the law has no authority over a woman's body is just ludicrous. There are all kinds of laws out there that say a woman's body is not her own. I'll just give you one. If you wanted to go and become a prostitute today, the law says it's illegal. You don't have the right to do with your body whatever in the world that you want to do. You'll get arrested for like that, for something like that. I'm just saying to you guys, there is a demonic blindness that is happening in our day and age, and it has our world acting like crazy people. I'll give you another case. Let's just say that a woman is driving. She's in her second trimester. She's driving. She's headed to a clinic to have an abortion. And let's just say that she's two blocks from that clinic to have that abortion. And let's just say that a guy is driving down the road and he's texting, not paying attention, and he runs right into the side of her car and it breaks her leg and it breaks her collarbone and it causes a lot of damage. She has to go to the hospital and that baby dies. That man will be charged with involuntary manslaughter. Yet, if she's able to make it two more blocks, then she is able to murder that child, and it is perfectly legal. It's the very same thing. Do you see how blind we are? Do you see what I'm talking about today? That this thing that keeps us from sanity, it's happening in 2019. It is evil. It is demonic. It is not of God. It's not a Republican thing or a Democrat thing. It is a biblical thing. But then in light of all that, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to respond as followers of Christ living in this day and age and this time? How do we respond? I'll tell you three ways that I think that we should respond. First of all, we've got to take ownership and we need to repent. Where we are guilty, we own it in repentance. And listen, knowing that when it comes to the body of Christ, we're going to be met with kindness. Because here's what happens, guys. Every time I speak on this subject, every time I talk about the gift of life, every time I talk about uh, the war that is raging on the unborn, every time I talk about abortion and what God's word says about that, there are women among us who, who've had abortions, who've never said anything to anyone, and they're walking around, and they're carrying this huge uh, amount of shame, and it's messed them up physically, and it's twisted up the relationships that they have in their life. I want to give a word of encouragement to you, my sisters. Don't carry the weight of that around any longer. You don't have to. You don't need to. Sin is sin, and the body of Christ speaks against it, but we respond in kindness. That is the blessing of being a part of a church filled with men and women who are seeking to follow after and love in the way that Christ loves. It is the church that has been called to be the hands and feet of Christ. It is the church that has been called to love people in spite of their past and in spite of their present and in spite of their sin. That we get up to walk in the light because of the community of saints. 
And so church, listen to me, our role is to come along and to help pick up those faces that are drawn, those faces that are dejected, to look in those tear-filled eyes and to with great compassion to empathize with them and to say, we love you. You don't have to carry this by yourself. We know that if you could go back, you would undo it. But listen, there is no shame here because Christ is here. Let's quit walking in the darkness of the secrets that we carry that shame us. Men, did you push her to do it? We own that before the mercy of God and the kindness extended to us in Christ. We own it and we repent. How do we respond? Secondly, we pray that we need to be actively praying for our government officials, praying for the day in which we live, praying that God would break this stronghold that abortion has on our world. And do not kid yourself, it's much more than just about a political stance. The reason why it is so prominent in the world that we live in is because it is so prosperous to many in the world that we live in. There are a lot of folks that make a lot of money off of this industry. And so our pro-life position, it is rooted in the Word of God, in God's good design for humankind. It's not rooted in a political party. It's rooted in the Bible. And I get, guys, that the time that we live in is very, very confusing political times, and yet we've got to understand that the Word of God calls us to be in opposition for anything that stands opposite to what the Word of God says. We ask God to increase our love. We ask God to be able to give us eyes to see people the way that He sees people. We want to love people in a way that mirrors the very way that Jesus loved people. There was a woman who had, who had relocated here to Bay County from Jamaica. She came here just seeking to try to find a job, seeking to, you know, make something a little bit more of their life, to, you know, to be able to make some money. And she came here. And while she was here, she found herself or she got pregnant. I don't know that you ever find yourself pregnant, right? She walked into the Pregnancy Resource Center. And she went there, our local pregnancy resource center, looking to have an abortion. She wasn't 100% sure that she was pregnant. Well, there was a nurse that was there, and she did a pregnancy test, and she talked to the woman about the medical facts of having an abortion. And the woman said, well, I I don't know what I want to do. I really think, though, that I I, I still want to have an abortion because this was not part of my plan. This is going to mess everything up. I'm in a foreign country, and I don't have any family here, and I don't know what to do. And so the nurse said, hey, why don't you speak to one of our counselors who happens to go to Highland Park? And so as she was speaking to one of these counselors, this lady at Highland Park, the the lady said, hey, can I share with you my own story? And the lady shared about her experience of having three abortions herself. She loved on that woman. And here's what the woman said. She said, I can't have an abortion, but also I can't keep the baby. So the counselor and this nurse began talking to this woman. Again, this lady, this counselor from our own church, talking to this woman about adoption and talking about people being out there that would love to love on this child and would love to raise this child, people who would love to make a difference in the life of this child because this life was so important to God. And not only did the lady that day choose life for her baby, but this lady also chose adoption. I think we've got, we have a picture here, guys. This is the lady right here in the bed on the day of delivery. This is the nurse. This is Patty from our church, the one who counseled and shared her own story. Show this beautiful blessing. And there's that child that was adopted by a family. That child's two months old right now, being loved on, being cared for. The woman who chose adoption 
being loved on, being cared for. Now, I know, I know that there are folks out there that are like, you know what, man? Now, here's the way that we fight against this, man. We go out and we pick it and we tell people that God hates uh, people who go through abortion and, and let's just fight and let's do everything that we can. And listen, what do you think this woman would have done if she would have shown up at a clinic and we were all out there holding signs, talking about the judgment of God coming down, talking about how God hates abortioners? What would she think she would have responded how do you, but she didn't. Instead, God used a woman that has poured her life into loving young women just like this who didn't just say, hey, let me have a 10-minute conversation with you, but instead poured into her life, walked through this entire journey with her, was not only there the first time that she heard the heartbeat of the child, but also was there to say, you know what, let me tell you about options. Let me tell you about God. Let me tell you what he can do. Let me tell you about another family. Walks her through the adoption process, is there at the hospital when she gives birth, and is still there in this lady's life offering aftercare, counseling, and sowing into this lady's life. That's what it means to be the body of Christ. That's what it means when we say we respond by asking God to increase our love. That's what it means to be the people of God. That's what it means to be pro-life. Listen to me, guys. It's not just that we're pro-unborn. We're pro-life. We're, 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 pro, we're pro women from Jamaica in a train wreck situation that should not ultimately end in the murder of an innocent baby, but is the church being the church of Jesus Christ by coming alongside for the long haul, the very least of these, guys. It is the church of Christ coming along those that find their life in such a difficult time with their head bent and saying, let us help you pick up your head. I know things are tough. I know this is not how you've planned. But we're going to walk through this process with you because great grace was shown to us and we'll extend great grace to you as well. It's our lives. It's not just so we can put, well, we served in this community group on our resume because we may run for political office. It's not just checking off a box. And this is how the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to meet head on the wickedness of its day by lifting up chins, by looking in tear-filled eyes, by saying there, there, there is no condemnation over here. Can I tell you, this is the kind of church I want us to be. Friend, listen. Listen. This world is not going to be changed by legislation. This world is not going to be changed by whichever political party is in control. This world is not going to be changed by anything except the love of Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Kyle, and I would like to thank you for watching our program today. Uh, we especially want to thank our sponsor, Perry & Young Attorneys at Law. Hey, let me thank you for taking the time to watch our program today. I pray that you've been blessed by it. Our prayer is that you found the teaching to be Christ-honoring and also biblical. If you've got any questions about anything that was spoken about today, we would encourage you, shoot us an email, info at highlandpark.org, or give us a call at our church office, 850-785-6530. Uh, if you've been encouraged by this message, we'd love to hear from you. Again, shoot us that email. Or if you uh, say, you know what, I believe in the ministry that Highland Park is doing, and I would like to support that. And friend, you give us a call, 850-785-6530, or you go to our website, and you can give your tax-deductible gift to support the ministry of taking the gospel far and wide through this local television station. Hope you'll watch us again next Sunday. God bless you. Have a great day.